Sam Burgess Meredith at the Big Story Newsstand. Headline. You know, we live in a headline world, a shorthand world, a world of initials and catchphrases and speed. We haven't the time, we say, to spell it out, so we, we say COD, or we stick up a sign, SRO, standing room only. We say no sale, hi-fi, dead end. There's a whole world in a word. But sometimes in our haste, the meaning goes out of words, the meaning in human terms, the people behind them. And tonight we look at the story of a reporter who went behind the shorthand phrase, the digest words, to the people that those words involve. The reporter was Nye Beeman. His paper, The Water Very American. In the story he wrote, the words hit and run meant murder. Waterbury, Connecticut, the county seat of New Haven County in Western Connecticut. Population 110,000, more or less, by the last census, on the Naugatuck River, center of the brass industry of America. The watch capital of the East. The name Waterbury is synonym for the word clock. This is the reporter, Nye Beeman, who took the phrase hit and run and went behind it. There is a person in that phrase, Someone who hits, someone who runs. What kind of a person is that? Who does such a thing? Why? Nye Beeman answered it and wrote a big story of our time. A terrifying story. He had failed. He began the day with a chip on his shoulder. The town owed him a living. That was in the afternoon. By the evening, like many who cannot face their own defeat, he wound up in a bar with the security of a drink and the big talk. So what does he do, huh? For an hour, he keeps me waiting in that stinky, smelly office. A whole hour. Finally, he comes out. What does he say? Haven't got the time to see you today. Come back tomorrow. Tomorrow? <laughs> Let me tell you, buddy, this is a great little town you got here. Great little territory. Sorry for your trouble, mister. Oh, sure, sure. Everybody's sorry. Buddy, let me tell you. I got customers up in New Haven. Guys in Boston and Worcester. Guys who'll just take me out to dinner if I'll just go into their store. I don't know. What kind of a town is this here? Waterbury, Connecticut, huh? Oh, the crumbs. All of them. Crumbs. I'd take it easy if I was you, mister. Sure, sure, I'll take it easy. I'll just hop on my jalopy and go back to the home office and tell them couldn't get in to see him in the friendly town of Waterbury, Connecticut. Hey, buddy, tell me something. Did you ever hear of quotas? Huh? How'd you make out last month, buddy boy? Well, you better top that, buddy boy. Yes, sir. Order a drink for me. Would you, mister? I'm at a table in the back. I'll pay for it. You just order it, huh? Sure, honey. Sure, sure. Look, mister, I just want a drink. They, they got a law. State of Connecticut. No minor served. You get it, and you bring it in the back. One for you, and one for me. Yeah. Okay? Uh -huh. Hey, buddy. How do you do? <laughs> Here you go. Thank you. Oh, oh. Honey, they call me Steve. Steve Martin. Best specialty salesman in the whole New England Territory. Yeah? Well, yeah. Honey, let me tell you, I had one day today sensational. 
My name's Marilyn. Oh. You know, like the movie star. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, you look better than the movie star to me. Mm. Tell you what, you know, you and I are gonna hit all the hot spots. Like many who cannot face their own defeat, they wound up lying to each other and believing their lies. Waterbury, not a bad town after all. So they bought a bottle and they took a ride and they parked and they drove. And the drive ended on her doorstep at 7 a.m. And Steve Martin was all ready to move in and make up for his failure of the day before. But Marilyn, like the movie actress, wasn't having any. Wait, honey, wait, wait, wait. I, look, honey, just a couple of minutes, huh? I can't. Oh, look, look, sweetie, all I want to do, I just want to go inside, sit down and have a cup of coffee, huh? Oh, look, sweetie, we had a wonderful time so far. Why do you want to spoil everything? I can. I tell you, I can. Oh, honey, be nice. Now, be... You look at the landlady. Do oh. <laughs> you look funny? Ah, uh, uh, you're nothing but a little... Get up and get out of here. The party's over. Hey, come on, honey. Honey, come on. Hey, you and there, honey baby. Come on, open up. Hey, honey. Come on. Ah, fooey. The scene has been set. Steve Martin. Failure fails again. This is the phrase, hit and run. And behind that phrase is a man. A man who hits, a man who hits another human being and runs. Who stops for a moment and thinks, it can't be too bad, I wasn't going too fast. I didn't hurt him, I'm sure. A man whose only thought is for himself, his skin, his safety, flight. Get rid of the car, that's first. Whatever else, get rid of the car. No one got hurt, so... But why take chances? So get rid of the car. Leave it on the street. No, 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 not on the street. That's not a good idea. The license can be traced. A parking lot. Nobody goes through parking lots. No cops, nobody else. Put it there, pay for it, leave it. Pick it up later. Good idea. Well, you're not as muddled as you thought, Steve Martin. Now what? Got to have an idea, because suppose, just suppose, you know it's not true, but just suppose that something happened, that he was a little hurt. Best thing to do is to clear your head. Clear your head, don't panic. Go somewhere and sit down and figure it out, quiet and calm. Hotel, hold up in a hotel. Keep out of sight, only be smart. Watch what you say. No, no, doll, I'm not stalling you. It's like I told you, they got me snowed under with work down here. Sure, that's all it is. Tell you what you do. Look, I'd like a room. Uh, sign the register. I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to disturb you. I'm just... Just very tired. Oh, look, hold on, doll. Will you just a minute? Oh, anything will do. No bags? Oh, no, no. I uh, I left them in my car. That'll be two fifty. I beg your pardon. In advance. Parking's two dollars extra. Oh, that's all right. I uh, I parked my car across. Uh, I I don't have a car. I'm sorry. What's that? What's that name? But, oh, Stevens, Al Stevens. It says print plane. I'm sorry, I'm just very tired. I, I want to get off my feet. I... All right. You're in room 12. I'll show you. It's right up at the head of Oh, the... that's all right. I I'll find it. Suit yourself. Hello, doll. Yeah. Four walls and a locked door helps. Pull the shade down. Nobody knows where you are, who you are. Why pull the shade down? Why pull the shade down? Why call attention of someone across the courtyard who might be looking? Leave it as it was. Just take it easy. Relax, wait. The 
for something to eat. Coffee and a sandwich. No, that's no good. You don't want them to see you. Just calm down. Wash your face, cool off. That's better, much better. My God, you look terrible. If that's the way you look downstairs, the clerk will remember you and... Don't let your imagination run wild. Nothing happened, nobody was hurt. You need some rest, some quiet. Just lie down, stretch out, relax. Nothing to do but wait. In a little while now, a couple of hours, four or five, at the most it'll be dark, and then take it easy, wait. Others waited too. A mother waited. A detective waited. A reporter named Nye Beeman waited. And then the phrase hit and run meant murder. The words behind the phrase hit and run are being given now to the rewrite man at the office. The name is Robert Fraser, F-R-A-S-E-R, age nine. 921 Columbia Boulevard. Time was a little after 7 a.m. I wouldn't want to ask you for a picture, not now, anyhow. Yeah. Yeah, Haber's here. There were no eyewitnesses. Uh, there may be a dent in the left fender of the car. No, his mother didn't see anything. Wait a minute, I'll check with Haber. Hang on. Anything you want printed that would help? I can't think of anything. Did you say anything else? Just one thing. Why? Yeah, that's about it. Yeah. I guess that's the headline, all right. Get the non driver kills a boy of nine. Now it's known. The people of Waterbury, Connecticut know it, and Steve Martin knows it too. It was nothing. It wasn't a scratch. Now they're all after me. Cops, the papers. No identification was made of either the car or its driver. There were no eyewitnesses. There may be a dent in the left fender. They don't know a thing. Wait a minute. I better get dressed and get out of town. Wait. They don't always print what they know. They never print what they know. Now wait, wait, wait. I better wait for the dark. No, no, I, I can't leave the car behind. No, no I'll wait for dark. Now wait for the darkness. That's it, yeah. Wait a minute. That girl, Marilyn. Uh, she was in the house. This happened down the block. Brother, if I keep this up, I'll go out of my mind. Oh, look at this, I'm talking to myself. Now stop it. Now stop it. Maybe because Nye Beeman wrote the words that are now in type. Maybe because he once lived in that area and because he knew children in that neighborhood. Or because the words hit and run meant a particular woman now and a particular boy. It may have been any of these reasons or all of them that made him ask questions. He talked to people who saw nothing. I'm sorry, we sleep late. He talked to a little girl who thinks she saw something. Put it down, put everything down. A piece of conjecture, a guess. Put everything down because maybe in this mass of information, misinformation, conjecture and gossip, there is something that will help you stop this from ever happening again. And so you take what you have, the pitifully little that you have, to Sergeant Haber because police work belongs to the police. I got the same 20 pages of misinformation that you've got. I got the whole town breathing down my neck. Safety committee, 
Parents Teachers Association, from the commissioner's office. Yeah, no, Sergeant. Maybe if you go over together, what you got, what I've got, well, maybe something will come out of it. Gossip and rumors. Got any better ideas? Okay. Homer on Cumberland Avenue said you saw the car and said it's dark green. Newsstand boy saw the car and said it's dark brown. Connecticut license, no number. Little girl said she saw the car. Dark brown. Nine-year-old girl? Anonymous phone call from a woman who said she heard a young couple calling at 7 o'clock in the morning on 947 Cumberland Avenue. She wouldn't give her name. Says this sort of thing happens all the time. Some young girl boards there, brings her boyfriends home early in the morning. Out of town license, light tan convertible coupe. Now, what's it all add up to? Little girl said the same thing. Two people fighting, a man and a woman. Mm. What was that address? What address? Well, the anonymous phone call. A 947 Cumberland. She said around the corner on Cumberland Avenue. That's the 900 block. Your nine year old girl? And she said early in the morning. You're grabbing at straws. What else have we got to grab at? Frank, go over this address and pick up a young girl that lives there. Bring her in on underage, anything. I want to question her. Can't take his own car, that's too dangerous. Take a bus. She's told them, they're going after me. Get back to the hotel. An hour, can't wait, got to get back. No cabs. What a town. Just get back as quick as you can. Get out of town. You can't wait until dark. You can't wait another minute. The danger is now. Rent a car. Right. No, no, you've got to show your driver's license. They know my name. No, they don't. I never told her my name. Just get the car and get going. Run. Hit and run means run and run and run. So I wasn't home last night, so what about it? I was at my girlfriend's house. What's her name? Well, what if I was out last night? I just wanted to have a drink and have some fun. I'm old enough. Now, take it easy, young lady. It's not about you or your drinking. That's your problem. I don't want you to get in trouble with the law. All you have to do here is tell me the truth. Now, were you or were you not having a quarrel at 7 o'clock in the morning in front of your house? What about it? Did you or didn't you? Well, he was getting fresh. I told him he couldn't come in. My landlady was up. She's always complaining. What is it this time? You seen the morning paper? Just down the block. What was his name? You think it was him? We don't know. Steve Martin. What kind of a car was he driving? I never noticed. Where was he from? He said a lot of things. Boston, I think. Maybe it was Newark. Oh, I thought he was a real creep. Look, you were pretty high. You don't remember everything too clearly. But try to think of anything that happened. Anything. Well, I met him at the bar. We had a couple of drinks. We went for a ride. He wanted to come in. I told him he couldn't come in. So then he wanted to know where could he go. He, he said he had to have some place to wash up and all was his excuse. So I told him to go to the Hotel Paris. At least it's on the other side of town. And, and then I ran in the house. 
and he kicked at the door. I wish I could remember more. I don't even know what he did for a living. I don't know his name, his real name, I mean. Look, Sergeant, how did it be good to go back to the beginning where you went into the bar, Marilyn, and go slow, step by step? It's a good idea, Nye. Marilyn, what was the name of the bar you went to? Frank. So it's not the Hotel Ferris. I'm sorry. Can you think of any other place? I can't remember exactly. There was Brian next. Right. I remember, but he ain't been in since. Are you sure? That one? I'd remember. I wish I could help you fellas. I really do. Uh, what do you think? Gee, I don't know. Where'd you go when you left here? We went for a ride. Did you stop any place? Yeah, we stopped a couple of places, but... Let's try the hotels. Yes, doll. Yeah, I'll be through here in about an hour. I... Look, I'll, uh, I'll have to call you back, huh? All right. You know a man registered here, name of Steve Martin? Look, mister, I'm busy just now. Huh? I asked you a question. Look, mister, th this is a hotel. It's not Answer a question. Gee, I'm sorry. I didn't know. I, I got a lot of guys coming in here asking questions. I, I, guy's I, name I, is Steve Martin. Martin? Oh, just a second. Fellow about 28, 30, tall, of light hair. He's wearing a light coat. No. No, no, Martin. No, sir. I'm sorry. He's a sort of a smooth talker. Fast. Like he changes his mind. He says something, then he changes it. Nervous, very nervous. Checked in in the morning about 7 or 8 o'clock. Hey. Hey, like you said, nervous, only trying to cover it up. Sure, he he checked in around 8 o'clock. Room 12, he, here it is. His name's Stevens, Al Stevens. He left. Checked out? He came running downstairs about an hour ago. Bang, right out the front door. Did he have a car? No. No, he said he didn't. First he said he didn't, then he said he did. Then he said he didn't. Uh, now, where's the nearest lot? Right across the street. Let's go. What'd he do? And this, what'd he do? to end, for a man who runs cannot run forever. He cannot run from himself. He cannot run from the truth. Hold it, Martin. You've got no place left to run. We live in a headline world and a shorthand world. Nye Beeman, a reporter, took those words hit and run, and he told the story behind them, the human story. In 60 seconds, I'll be back with the outcome of tonight's big story. There was a trial, and once again, a man ran from truth. A man lied, a man made denials. And then came the painful business of reconstructing that terrible act. A mother took the stand. A lost child of 19 years old named Marilyn took the stand. And a frightened failure, Steve Martin, a man who hit and ran, he took the stand. And a reporter named Nye Beeman wrote the final words to the story. Now here is the plaque we were proud to present him with for his work. See you next week, same place, same time. Another big story that was new that touched people, that was written by another man who cared about people behind the headline. Until then, so long.